Kia ora guys, you're watching Juice TV, GC Bird here talking with Jeremy and Thomas from Busby Maru. How are we? Fantastic. Very good. Really good. And now you guys have been in New Zealand for a few days. I saw you enjoy the uh, Wellington Bluff Oysters. <laughs> you played uh, headlining the James Blunt uh, Moonlander Tour kicking off on Wednesday, or Tuesday, and Wednesday in Auckland. So tell me, how has New Zealand crowd been? Have been quite receptive for you? It's been amazing, you know, and it's just, I mean, it's pretty good that uh, our very first ever New Zealand shows are to, you know, two to three thousand people per show, thanks yeah. to James Blunt, um, but the crowds have been coming in, in early, I don't know if that's by accident or not, but uh, either way, we've taken advantage of it and have been fantastic, we've met everyone after the shows, we're selling out of CDs, and mm. yeah, it's just really cool, it feels a little bit like home. Do you guys get to chill with James Blunt at all, you're quite separate from him, how does that work? No, we're, look, we're, we all bump into each other back, backstage, but we haven't had the chance yet to have, you know, we're only two shows into the tour, but I'm sure by the end of it we'll, uh, you know, we'll have some pre-show drinks somewhere. How'd you guys meet? When did this bromance start? <laughs> yeah, well, look, we grew up, it's quite strange to, you know, not know each other growing up uh, in Rockhampton. It's a pretty small town, but uh, we didn't really meet until after school. A couple of our mates were playing in bands, and, you know, I used, to, I used to study in Brisbane, and I'd come home from the uni holidays with my guitar and jump up before Jeremy's band, and, uh, you know, I'd... I basically knew that I wanted to pinch him from my mate one day. <laughs> I needed him to make my music sound good and it, it developed to be a bit stronger than that. It, uh, the chemistry was pretty instant musically, you know, it was, it was quite easy and it, and it was so much fun. So we, I came back a few years later and we started playing together and writing songs and uh, yeah, but we haven't stopped since. Did you know you guys always wanted to make a career out of music? Oh, I think early days it was more about just playing music because it was just a passion that Tom and I both had. You know, we, we were always going to play music regardless of whether we worked all week or not but um, I think as we progressed and we you know we did our first couple of recordings we thought hang on a minute we just, you know this is actually really people are liking it and I think uh, there was a stage there we both went you know we, we both quit our jobs we were like yes you know this is yeah. actually and it wasn't really till that day I thought well actually this is going to be a, a you know a lifetime career for us both. Well by the end of it we were both working for the government I was a, uh, a public servant lawyer as well and uh, we worked for the same department and uh, you know <laughs> Oh, it's such and such from the yeah. public. Can you just go speak to Jeremy, please? Hey, mate, you, how was the gig last night? Because yeah. <laughs> we were you know, living in different towns, and uh, but they were very supportive of us, and our drummer always used to say, come on, boys, make the jump. Every day's a Saturday. Mm. Come on. And uh, when we finally had to resign, we, it wasn't as though we... I mean, we did want to, but we always got worried about it. And when we finally uh, just had to do it because we were too busy, we wrote out the resignation letters, took a photo and said, every day's a Saturday, boys, let's go. <laughs> and it's working well for you because you've got your second studio album out now. That's Farewell Fitzroy. Fitzroy being the river that runs through Rockhampton. Why did you name your album that? Oh, I think because it was significant for us, you know, our hometown, Rockhampton. So it was, uh, it's, it's a massive, big, beautiful river system and it floods all the time. So it really impacts um, both of our families on a yearly basis. So it was good to, uh, I guess, have a title that um, I guess we could relate to home. Yeah, and also about moving away from, you know, the first album was all about what we knew. Uh, you know, all these songs we'd written from growing up or in and around central Queensland or Rockhampton. And this one in particular was... I suppose now we're playing all, all across the world and you know we're over at New Zealand now and mm. we've been playing all you know everywhere but Rockhampton so I suppose it's a bit of a uh, tongue in cheek sound farewell Fitzroy for the, sh for, the, for the meantime you know. Now earlier this week I saw because your album your second album has just dropped you said if it lands in the top 20 <laughs> that Jeremy will take on a John Alamo inspired hairstyle and uh, I just want to know does that game plan still stand? <laughs> well I, I had no idea the post was going up and Tom I read it I had a whole lot of comments and I was like, what, what, what have I said? And I had a look at the picture and I thought, oh, it, but yes, it does still stand. Oh, love it. It. That's good because I probably won't be with you guys when you actually do the haircut. You'll probably be um, in Australia or something. So I had this whipped up thanks to our editor. Take a look at this photo and tell us, <laughs> tell us what you think. <laughs> I actually you look good. Oh, he looks like Mr. T. I love that. A little bit of baldness, not bad, eh? <laughs> bit of Kimber Slice about that, my arms too. <laughs> At least you know, with the years to come, you're going to look quite good. And uh, we could actually do this right now, if you want, with the help of Brendan. <laughs> I saw him backstage, he was like, what are you up to here? Um, we need to talk more about your album, Farewell Fitzroy. That was um, recorded in Nashville, looking good. And uh, that was pro with producer uh, Brad Jones. So tell me about the experience producing this album. Oh, we'd never been, uh, well, we've been 
overseas, but uh, very briefly, you know, went to South by Southwest a couple of years before that. But as a band, we'd never recorded or worked overseas, you know. Uh, so it was a really cool experience going to Nashville. And I mean, the idea to go there wasn't, you know, we didn't say let's go to Nashville to record because it's, you know, the music capital of the yeah. world. It was just by chance. We wanted to work with Brad Jones. We thought, you know, bring out the best in, you know, our acoustic kind of sounds and our live, our live band now that we take with us and. It was awesome experience. We get to wake up in this really groovy, uh, haunted, uh, haunted that, studio. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the haunted studio. How did you guys make music around a ghost? Yeah, we. Uh, it was easy to make the music. It was just a night time when we were all trying to sleep and none of us could sleep. We were all blaming the jet lag, but it was because we were all scared of the uh, boogeyman. But uh, our drummer's actually a mortician by trade, so he doesn't get scared of much, and he was freaking out. So yeah, I thought I'd take a little um, cheesy note here. And did you have any ghost writers on this album? <laughs> <laughs> no, we should have. We left them out, damn it. Well, thanks for laughing with that one anyway. Tell me about uh, a single from the album, my favourite one. It's called My Second Mistake. I love the overall sound. I love the video, the Muppet situation going on. Tell me about this one. The video was probably the most fun part of the um, of this, this song for us. But uh, no, look, in the studio, it was one of those songs that Brad really put his twist on and um, it's it's got some amazing um, Conan guitar, I think yeah. it's called, and we're lucky enough to have a bloke... Um, Al Perkins. Al Perkins is a very world-renowned um, guitar steel player, player, pedal steel player, and he was just jumped in the studio and did this amazing work on it, and it, um, I can't even play it live, but uh, we, <laughs> I'll well, ch change it around like, a bit. Yeah, uh, when you see this bloke play, you kind of want him to have his own, own way. He's been on Rolling Stones albums, and you know he's a well-renowned um, well as well uh, player, and just to watch him play this little slide guitar gave us you know, a good bit of vibe to the yeah. song, and it's uh, you know, a really fun song to sing live in particular. It's my favourite to play live, and it's got a bit of oomph, got a bit of happiness, and uh, you know, it's been you know, really well received when we're playing it. Nice. Well, thank you guys so much for coming into Juice TV today and having a chat with us. Good luck with Farewell Fitzroy and also good luck with James Blunt uh, Moonlander tour in Australia as well. Yeah, thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Cheers.